Ash vs. Evil Dead, Season 2, Episode 1, Thoughts. This episode is called Home. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MC, every Evil Dead franchise thing, living up to and including this one. The show is rated TVMA, so will this video be? Let's dive right in. So, yeah. Um, I've been listening to the audio commentaries for the first season, and Bruce Campbell specifically says about Jacksonville, it's funny that they chose that and not, say, Miami, because Jacksonville, I think the exact words he used were, it's just a shitty big city. So, yeah, it is pretty funny seeing him, his character, enjoy Jacksonville this much. And, yeah, see, the kids were already really creepy, but when one of them is, like, close to Lucy Lola's and saying, Mama, wow, that's, yeah, do not want. Let's see. And, I, you know, she's like, I can't believe this is my last hope. And, yeah, fun gag with, you know, Ash has the, the chains already and people are, like, screaming. And then it's, you know, he jams it into a keg and beer sprays on everyone. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. The, they weren't screaming out of fear. They were screaming out of anticipation, excitement for him to do that. Agree with Kelly. Fuck people who don't leave a tip. If you can afford it. And the, <laughs> can I touch it? And she's like rubbing across the thing as, and he's like, I gotta be honest with you, I'm not drunk enough yet to, fo to determine if this is good weird or bad weird, but I'll get there. <laughs> hey, d d time out. That really, that's, that's, that line is giving come on, I said it right, like, Ash continues to think that he can just reason with the forces of darkness, that if he just explains, and, yeah, um, we get the, um, one of the, one of the deadites chants Ashy Slashy, and, yeah, letting him know where where to go to meet Ruby. And yeah, love the gag when, you know, Kelly's trying to, to save this person and like grabs and, and pulls and meanwhile the, the deadite is is hard at work and it ends up with Kelly just holding the, the severed arms. That's all that's left. And yeah, love the, the chainsaw toss. We expect him to just perfectly catch it on the, you know, but instead, one of the deadites like grabs his ankles, and the the part of the chainsaw, not the not the sharp part, hits him in the in the face instead, and he manages to use the the belt to to get the the chainsaw over to him, which is very reminiscent of how he used the uh, what's the jewelry thing, the jewelry chain to get the book in the first Evil Dead. So it's a, it's a consistent aspect of the franchise. Ash is just incredibly good at using, you know, yeah, belts and, and jewel chains and such to, you know, yeah, wrap them around the thing he, he's trying to get his hands on and, and <clears throat> drag them there. <clears throat> and... Yeah, great way, you know, one of the deadites, like, it looks like, oh, I mean, they've been defeated, and they're, like, standing, barely, and slipping on the blood, just, yeah. And, yeah, it's Ash tricks Pablo into accidentally participating in a racist joke, which, you know, not the biggest fan of that. I did, you know, the, the callback near the end of, of the episode is pretty funny. And, yeah, uh, sinkholes are still popping up. Oh, uh, there's a rise in violent crime. 200%. Yeah, that does sound like... Yeah. That's either the forces of darkness summoned by an evil book, or there was just a MAGA rally there. 
and he riled up his base as usual. And let's see. Yeah, I Ash isn't even like sneaking in beer. He's just drinking openly in front of the other two and they're not really saying anything. And then we then he says, you know, who drank all the beer? Kelly's like, you, you did. And and she said, you know, your bladder must be killing you. And he says, I've been going this whole time. Wow. And yeah, Pablo is trying to to draw a you know of um what's it called sketch sketch you know yeah sketch drawing of the the face of Ruby so they can show that and he accidentally draws the book just like the the you know yeah also Evil Dead one uh, I, f I forget which of them but but one of the ladies in the movie drew the the book her hand became possessed and let's see yeah are you sure Ruby's in this cracked in this is not a cracked in it's my house it looks nice quality save Kelly and yeah the the creepy kid jump scares is, is quite good check out this creepy fucker who or, or where he was right here, and then, you know, just, yeah. And, yeah, we hear screams from inside the house, existent circumstances, and he walks in, and it's the TV. And, and good detail that, you know, uh, what was his, I already forgot his name, but the, uh, uh, Brock Williams, yeah. Ash's father. Nice detail that he's played by Lee Majors, and they make a six million dollar reference, six million dollar man reference. You know the the yeah, better, stronger, faster. Um, but the yeah, you know he fires his gun to scare off. You know it's it's supposed to signal. You know the the I'm you know it's loaded. I know how to use this thing, that kind of thing. And of course, you know he he doesn't realize there's people with guns outside also so yeah very cool to see Michelle Hurd again jumping ahead slightly but yeah liked her on on Daredevil charmed yeah um let's see yeah and the you know Ash is that you you look good old like bloated like a bag of I get it I appreciate that like almost everyone who remembers Ash says that he looks bad let's see and and yeah also you know yeah Pablo and Kelly come in guns drawn and he makes a couple of remarks and Kelly's like yep that's definitely Ash's father and yeah, we learn that, which I do quite appreciate because you know it's, it's something we haven't really thought about watching the other movies, watching the movies. But yeah, after the events, I was gonna say after Evil Dead One, but I guess technically Evil Dead Two happened because Ash did lose his hand, and that was Evil Dead Two, not Evil Dead One. Someone, you know, one of the Deadites lost a hand, but not Ash in Evil Dead One. But yeah. Um, technically, Evil Dead Two happened, but without being, be without the time travel. Seemingly, at least, no one's mentioned it yet, which I feel like Ash would probably have mentioned. But anyway, yes. Um, the the yeah. In the aftermath of the movies, yeah, you know all that regular people saw was that a bunch of kids went into this cabin the only survivor is Ash and there's a bunch of cut up buddy bodies buddies the bodies of his buddies so yeah you know they think he's a serial killer basically and 
and and yeah, Brock sends away Ash and Pablo, and then says, Kelly, would you like to stay for dinner? Wow. Hard pass. You know, I, I'm sure there's some people who still do think Lee Majors is, you know, amazing. He was, like, yeah, in, in his youth, he was definitely considered very attractive. Um, let's see. And I do appreciate the, the casting. They, they found someone who's got the, you know, he can pull off. You know, th yeah, this is Ash in 20 years, basically, kind of thing. And also, the, the you know, yeah, has this, this like, overconfidence, but some charisma and charm. And, and just, yeah, they, they really did a good job there. And let's see. Um, what did I write? Oh, oh, right, yes. Uh, Pablo is seeing the book everywhere. You know, I appreciate that there is this after effect of the the mask. Which we also get a, you know, they bring that back briefly. And, and yeah, um, leave it to Ash. Like, he's in that bar for four seconds before he flirts with the wife of the sh sheriff. Like, he's already in deep shit. Like, he walks in the door and everybody recognizes him. Everybody is like, you know... Like, they don't even do the, the Hollywood trope thing of... Who's that? Ah, oh, you... Let me tell you. No, it's just... You know, everyone's like, oh, fuck this guy. And he makes it even worse. Wow. And... Yeah, the, the, you know, the sheriff says, I'll help you, and then he turns around and turns on him. And, you know, you have this thing, oh, he, you know, he lost his mind and cut up people. I didn't lose my mind. I knew exactly what I was doing when I was cupping, cutting up my friends. And, yeah, and their chant, that they, yeah, they start chanting Ashy Slashy instead of, as you know, in Jacksonville, where they were the humans, you know, there was a deadite, but the humans were chanting Ash, you know, and it, I do appreciate, you know, that is why, you know, this is why he doesn't live, at, you know, in in his home hometown anymore, and it's why he's so eager to give up, you know, he he does ultimately lack self confidence because of this, uh, you know, yeah. And it is true, you know, there's a lot of classic horror movies where, you know, if you imagine, you know, what, what happened to the survivor of that movie, yeah, it probably looked like, you know, th they're not all going to look like serial killers. Some of them are going to look like they, you know, they're, they're hallucinating or something, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't usually end well, you know, but we don't, you know, think about that. We just appreciate the catharsis of, ah, oh, someone made it out alive kind of thing. And, and you know, to, you know, there are some horror movie sequels that actually deal with this. I think the Halloween, you know, the, the most recent trilogy did a, a good job following up on that. And, yeah, um, Ash trying to win the people back does you know a a monologue that was very reminiscent of army of darkness he even calls them screw heads and i appreciate it. not you linda you're you're different than them and yeah pablo imagines the the book going on his face tries to rip it off rips you know the the flesh off his face relatable and nice poltergeist reference Let's see, the, um, yeah, love the, the montage of getting ready, and, and very clever to put the, the dagger on the end of the, the shotgun, and, you know, I appreciate that he also, you know, he, like, puts some, some rubbing alcohol on, and then, like, looks directly at the camera and is like, you never know, 
and <laughs> we gave peace a chance. Now it's time for war. <laughs> and yeah, the, they do a great job making the making appreciating how creepy a crematorium is. They should just call them creepymatoriums. I'm I actually have a petition circulating, and the you know. Just yeah, very reminiscent of the 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 cellar in the in the first movie, and the 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 windmill in the in Army of Darkness. And yeah, some great stuff with the the shadow. You know, if he's he's like trying to see, wait, does it match my movements? It was very reminiscent of the the mirror in the. It, yeah, especially in Army of Darkness, it's the, the you know, there's a mirror gag in all three movies, and, of the, of the trilogy, and, and the, the shadow also pulling Kelly under, Let's see, and, and we get a Three Stooges gag with, you know, Ash walks right into a, a pipe, which, like, that one's on you, buddy. Nobody pushed you. You should have seen that pipe, you know. But and then he like hits it, and it, you know, the the pipe comes loose, blows a bunch of ash in his face. Very appropriate. Yeah, very very Three Stooges. You know, this is a franchise that can you know, like, it's, the the ash entrance entries in this franchise can only go so long without doing Three Stooges shtick. And very clever that Pablo is actually invisible to the the kid, uh, you know, the demon kid, because of the medallion. And yeah, we get uh, you know now Kelly's the one who who fires, and and you know fire yeah fires bullets and and out the bullet holes come blood to the point where like you know. Yeah, like covers or sprays on her, and she's almost drowning. And there's also the the bit where possessed Kelly like chokes her, and I do like the fact that you know again not a big fan of you know women being choked in in movies, especially in real life, obviously. But yeah, movies and TV shows, I not the biggest fan of showing it. But I do appreciate, you know, she and and the the possessed one both hit each other at the exact same, you know, time and such. And yeah, you know, once you realize it was her choking herself, it was also, you know, why you keep hitting yourself, Kelly? And yeah, finally Ash does reach Ruby, and and yeah, you know, she lost control. And now needs their help. Very good setup for this second season. And let's see. Yeah, and, and she, you know, very clever of her to, to, you know, she had a different book that the, the you know, yeah. The, so the demons think they have the right one. And yeah, very cool when Ash fights all three demon spawn. As I just realized, the uh, yeah, the um, MDB credits list them as demon spawn one, two, and three. And and yeah, by the way, fantastic performances by those. Perf yeah, um, like the the physical performance, very strong. And the yeah, I appreciate that. You know, he actually uses, you know, let's see, is it the chase? He, he wounds one of them in the, in the, and, and they just heal, you know, and it actually takes the dagger to significantly hurt them. And, uh, yeah, we end on an, an Alzheimer's joke, which it's so so offensive but I I can't claim that I didn't find it kind of funny IMDB trivia for this episode <laughs> the photos of Ash 
as a child are actual photographs of Bruce Cameron when he was a child. Some of these photos can be found on Bruce's official Twitter and his 2002 autobiography, If Chins Could Kill, Confessions of a B-Movie Actor. Yeah. And let's see. Oh, that's right. Yes. Um, I, don't, I don't know how I forgot that. But yeah, the bit where Ash hits his head on a pipe like Ash hits his face. In the extended windmill scene in Army of Darkness, Ash hits his head on a pipe like Ash sprays on his face in the exact same way. Yeah. And let's see. Oh, pfft. the the yeah. When Brock mentioned, you know, you're looking for Bigfoot. Yeah, a, a Lee Majors character did encounter Bigfoot. And yeah, and the yeah, one by one we will take you, spoken by the dead eye mom in Jacksonville. And the line was also said by Cheryl in The Evil Dead. <laughs> Copy of the novel A Farewell to Arms is seen in the trunk of the Oldsmobile when the trio arrive at the crematorium. In Evil Dead 2, the book was one of the many objects placed on the bucket containing Ash's evil hand. <laughs> wow. Okay, so apparently on the audio commentary, Bruce Campbell predicts Season 7, the musical episode, which, yeah, references the Xena episode. I should watch that again. That was a fun episode. A lot of fun episodes in that show. <laughs> the record store in Elk Grove is called Groovy Sounds. And... Oh, yeah, the, the... Yeah, when Ash cuts off the dead-eyed mom in Jacksonville, her limbs go flying past the camera. Reference to Evil Dead 2 when it's Henrietta Nobi. And, yeah, um, Ash calls the people inbred degenerate screwheads, where in, a in Army of Darkness it was primitive screwheads. And, yeah, Kelly, being confronted by an evil version of herself, is similar to Ash, confronted by his own during the mirror scene in Evil Dead 2. And oh, <laughs> yeah, Yippee Kaye, motherfucker. Reference to Die Hard, and and yeah, we gave peace a chance. Reference to the John Lennon song. And yeah, um, one of the one of the goofs continuity mentions that when Cindy, Cindy the Deadite Mother loses her arms, both amputated limbs are right-handed. I can explain that one, not that I worked on this, but knowing what I do, what I know about the, the business, every single, you know, some, some of it is CG, but if someone is directly, like, holding something, there's likely some prop element to it, at least. And they have to make a cast for, you know, that prop when it's, you know, this kind of thing. They only wanted to make one cast. You know, it might even have, maybe they didn't even really have time or money, which when you're making movies is about the same thing, to, to make multiple casts. So, so, yeah, they made one cast, they used it twice and hoped people would notice. And, yeah. Let's see. And... I think that might right. Also, the ashy slashy chant, um, the the um, ah, what's the word? It it reminded me of when we hear Joxer's, you know, the original song from his his mean brother. And let's see. Right. I also I like when you know Ash. You know when the when the rain starts and Ash is like, "My God, I left the windows down in the Delta." I'm already regretting summoning you. Yeah, get used to that feeling. 